Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and welcome to another exciting collaboration. This time, we are collaborating with the light painting ninja. Yes, you heard it right. The light painting ninja. Shooting Dave. So if you're not familiar with Dave, you guys are missing a lot. A lot, honestly speaking. Not just on his Instagram account, which he posts a lot of mind-blowing stuff, but also on YouTube. Dave has been an awesome creator on YouTube and I enjoy watching his videos. The content, the delivery, this guy is just awesome. Anyway, I'll leave a link to his YouTube account and Instagram account in the description below, so make sure to check him out. So Dave posted this gorgeous shot, I don't know, uh, a year ago, a couple of years ago. So I reached out to Dave and I asked him, would he be interested in actually showing us how he shot the photo, what was his you know, workflow in terms of using Lightroom and then moving it to Photoshop, what, how he handled the layer, how he masked the entire thing. I mean, look at this shot. It, it is so, so, so beautiful. Anyway, before handing it to Dave, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And now I'm going to hand it over to Dave right after the intro. Thank you very much for that warm introduction, Mo. I really do appreciate it. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am at Shooting Dave, a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles. And today we are talking about a light painted image and how I put it together. It is of Mike Burroughs' 32 Ford Rat Rod from Stanceworks. It runs a Ford Coyote motor and it makes about 730 wheel horsepower. So it is no slouch. Now, if you guys aren't sure what a light painted image is, then you should check out some of Mo's tutorials, he covers that plenty in depth on this channel. And if you want to see some more recent work from me, because this is from 2018, so check out my Instagram at Shooting Dave. Okay, enough of the plugs, let's get into Lightroom and Photoshop and let's walk through this. Okay, so these are the different exposures that I have inside Lightroom of Mike Burroughs' 32 Ford. I typically make my way lighting around the car, lighting up different surfaces and figuring out what I like. I tend to overshoot here so I have more that I need so that if I need to in post I can always use a different exposure for that perfect highlight. Now there are a couple of changes that I like to make inside Lightroom before jumping into Photoshop and they are typically dropping the highlights and raising the shadows. So just minus 10 and plus 10 on highlights and shadows. Other than that I take out all of the sharpening, all noise reduction and I enable uh, chromatic aberration removal and profile corrections for the lens as well. So that allows me to have a nice clean image before jumping into Photoshop. Um, for the car, like I said, I'll light the car, going around lighting the different areas, making sure I've covered everything I need to. I will also photograph the headlights and taillights of the car, as well as getting any ambient exposures. Now here at Mike's shop, we had the ability to turn on the lights in the background, which was handy, so I could get that hero light as if the car was actually sat outside. So once all that is done, simply select all of the images, right click, go to edit in and open as layers inside Photoshop. And this will automatically layer each photograph on top of another inside Photoshop. I've already done that, so let's jump straight into here. So I like to work on my images with background first, then the car, then any lighting on top of it. So if we start at the very beginning, which is the background, I have a base exposure here for the background, which is that shop light that we were talking about earlier. I made some camera raw adjustments onto that, so if we open up these adjustments, we can have a look at what was done inside there. And all I did was simply cool down the image a little bit. If you're wondering what that red splodge is in the screen, that's just a, a highlight warning showing me that we've got a blown out highlight. But don't worry, I, I took care of that later on. So once that's done, I had a slightly darker exposure, which I used and then masked, so it'd only be for the background of the image and not the floor. And all I did on that one is basically copy the same camera raw settings over, minus 15 on the temperature, just to cool down that light a bit so it isn't so orange. So if we turn off that uh, camera raw filter, you can see that it's actually quite warm. And I thought it was a bit more pleasing if we have it slightly cooler and neutral. 
On top of that, I then added a curves adjustment. So if you look what we did in curves, that's simply just boosting up the shadows a little bit and recovering some of those highlights, just so we can see what is going on inside the image a little bit more, so it's not so heavy and shut down. Now, during the process, whilst uh, working on the car, I might revisit areas of the background just to make it suit a bit more. But what I like to do is build out the background first, so then I have a general vibe for how the car is going to look, and I can adjust the lighting accordingly. A couple of other things I did to the back background was I actually took one of the lighting passes for the car and included it for the background. Now if I turn off this layer mask you can see what I did here so it's actually dropped down in opacity to 65% but if we put it back to 100 I simply walked around the back of the car but I actually quite like what it did to the floor. It added this nice pool light adding a little bit more texture and tone into the ground so I had that layer set to lighten above the background so if we just reapply the mask and set back the opacity to how it was 65 and there we go so that's just adding a little bit of light around the bottom of the car which i feel is quite nice uh, moving on we also pulled in some uh, of the headlight and tail light exposures and burnt those into the background um, i can sometimes put these on the top but I, I like to put them on the background as well so this is probably put in uh, after the facts and slightly later but yeah these are the exposures used for that so moving on to the car now, that's all the background taken care of, so we don't need to work on that anymore. So the car. Now before we jump into this, all of these exposures in here are for the car. Now the way I control them and how they work is I have a, them all in one group labelled car, but I have a mask on that group which is actually just of the car. So I'll go around the car with the pen tool and path out the vehicle so that I get a nice selection on that vehicle. So anything I do only affects the car. Okay, so when it comes to building out the car, I like to start with the largest portion of the car, and that is typically the side. So when you're doing a front three quarter, the front is gonna be narrower than the side, so I like to work with the largest side of the car. Uh, so here's our exposure for that. It's got a layer mask on it, so it's simply just lighting up the side of the car, and then I use the mask just to take out some of the points in the roof where it got a little bit too hot. Now moving on to the roof, um, I didn't like how it was looking in this exposure, I felt it was a little bit too hot, so I had another pass that I used for the roof. So if we turn this one on, it is slightly darker in exposure, but it gives a bit more tone and uh, texture to the roof, which I liked. And I set this um, layer to blending mode normal, and then I applied a mask on it so it only affected the part that I wanted. So if we turn these two on, you can see combined, it gives us a nice uh, texture because I didn't want all this metal work to be lost with white highlights. I wanted to see all that lovely texture and patina carried through. So paying attention there really so I'm not destroying any of the details of the car. Then we had a rim light, which is walking around the back of the vehicle. This is set at light and mode, and I just threw a mask on there to get rid of any areas that I didn't want, and it was mainly in the bottom left of the car down here, seeing as we'll be coming to those later on. Looking at the images, it's looking pretty good so far. There's only a couple of things that I feel like it needed, and that was mainly around the front grills. I wanted, this is all handmade in here, these louvers, which house the headlights, they're completely custom. So I wanted to make sure to show those off. So I have an exposure down here, which is obviously doing way too much to the car. So I just have a little mask on here, getting rid of the bits that are not wanted. So mainly underneath the, uh, the wheels, um, and also just making sure that we can see inside the cabin here as well. So very subtle, but I feel like it was needed. Next on to the wheels, um, I have a nice exposure because these are actually, as far as I can remember, they are uh, Le Mans racing wheels, they're prototype wheels. So Mike in theory should not have these, but nevertheless he managed to get his hands on the set. So obviously it's important to pull attention to those. Um, this pass on its own is too broad and too bright, so slap a layer mask on there and it only really pulls out the wheels there. So now the car is looking nice and squat and I like the way it's looking. The only thing we need to do now is add on some of the headlight pass because we have it turned on on the background but not on the car, so that looks a little strange. So I duplicated uh, that headlight pass and just brought it in here. I set the mode to light and, and then I uh, feathered it off to the areas that I wanted to keep it in, so I just tidied up to make sure it didn't spill out any further than the grill. So if we actually lose this layer mask, you can see it's lighting up the front subframe and the insides of the wheels, but I thought it was a little ugly, so yeah, I just cleaned it up so it's only showing up in the grill. 
And then I just add a little curves adjustment on there, which is really very subtle. And all that is doing is dropping down the shadows and just holding the highlights where they are. And all that does is just add a little bit more shape and definition to what's going on behind the grills. Now, that is it inside of Photoshop. I do all of my color grades and adjustments inside of Lightroom. So I'll jump back over to Lightroom and show you what I've done there. Okay, so the final effect in Lightroom looks quite different from what it did in Photoshop. Here's the raw one out of Photoshop and the finished product inside Lightroom. And now I know it looks quite different, but don't worry, I'm gonna go through all of the steps that I did in order to make this image look like this. I had a vibe that I wanted to go for, which is kind of urban and grungy. So all these settings were basically working towards that. The first thing I did was actually take out some of the warm tones in there. I feel it was a little too warm and I wanted to add a bit more of um, a cool look to it. So I just dropped down the temperature minus five. I also dropped down the exposure a little bit as well because I felt like it was a little too open and a little too cartoon looking and dropping down the exposure by a third of a stop um, makes it feel a little bit more vibey and a bit more grungy, which I liked. I also recovered some of the highlights and I brought back some of the shadows as well because I felt like it was getting a little too heavy and a little too weighted. I left the whites and the blacks alone. Um, I added a little bit of clarity um, and now typically I always add a bit of vibrance but then counteract that by removing some of the saturation. And that's it for the basic panel. Um, then moving on to the tone curve. Now this is actually where a lot of the image look is developed. Um, I prefer to use the tone curve for my color grading and also my contrast. So down here, I've actually lifted the black point up a little bit to 4.3%. I then dragged down the, um, the shadows a little bit and also lifted the highlights. But if we go from RGB into blue, you can see I've pushed blue up into these shadows and dropped blue out of the highlights. Now by doing that, it introduces a little bit more yellow into those highlights. Going through to see if we've done anything else to green. No, I haven't in the red, no, they're both left alone. So it's just RGB and blue that I affected. Um, left the HSL tab alone, that is as is, so in with split toning. And then we come into the detail, the sharpening. Now I do a lot of sharpening here. Um, I use quite a large amount. Um, so if we zoom in here and hover over amount and hold Alt or Option and then click here, you can see that it's quite a well-defined image and I did that on purpose. I have quite an aggressive radius on here, 1.2. I normally stick around 1 to 1.1, but I felt like I wanted to pull out all the sheet metal and really make um, these edges become a little bit more obvious. So that's why I'm going for a slightly larger radius on here. I also had quite a lot of detail pushed in as well. So if we hold down this, you can actually see where those two effects are combined. It's, it's really starting to pull out some of the edge detail. If you look at this tire here, you can see like the edges have been pulled out nicely. But to counteract all of that sharpening, I use a lot of masking as well. So you can see it's at 47. So if we click Alt or Option over masking and click on the little slider itself, all of those white areas are the areas that are being sharpened. The black areas are being left alone. So I'm not globally sharpening the image. I'm only sharpening the parts that I want. I had a little bit of noise reduction in there as well. It was shot at ISO 100, so it doesn't really need it. But the thing is, because it's long exposures, that sensor is getting warmer and warmer the longer it's been held open. So I always add a little bit of noise reduction to light painted images, whether it needs it or not. Um, it just makes me feel better. And ultimately, that is it for all of the color changes and editing process on this image. So there you have it. That was Mike Burroughs' 32 Ford light painted. Pretty simple once you know how it's done. Thank you so much to Mo for having me on this channel. I really do appreciate it. It's nice to see all of your audience out there. So hello from me and thank you to Mo. Right guys, I'll hand back over to Mo and he can sign out this video. See ya. You see guys, this guy is a light painting ninja. Whether you guys like it or not, he is a light painting ninja. And I think he should rename his accounts to a light painting ninja because he is a light painting ninja. Anyway, guys, we've reached the end of this tutorial. Now, don't forget to check out Shooting Dave. Uh, I'll leave a link to his YouTube account and Instagram in the description below. Make sure to check him out. Now, if you have any questions, if you have any queries, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next video.